the past couple of months, we have been focusing on a lot of Horde shooters lately, and I'm very happy about that. Ever since I made my co-op Horde shooter tier list video last year, hey, the sequel's coming out in December, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. We have been mostly focusing on the Warhammer 40k series, which has been Space Marine 1, Space Marine 2, Dark Tide, Bolt Gun, all that fun jazz. But there is a horde shooter game that I haven't talked about much, but if you're into this genre like I am, you definitely know about it, especially its sequel is active for many, many years. I am of course talking about a game that just recently got a PvP game mode update out of fucking nowhere, Warhammer Vermintide 2. Warhammer Vermintide 2 is not a game that I have forgotten about. I always see it every time I go into my Horde Shooter tier list, and I always see that it's there. Unfortunately, personally, I felt like in the beginning when I was starting to get into all these games, I thought that this game was pretty mediocre to me. And going back and replaying it and revisiting it to this day, I was dead wrong. I didn't do nearly everything. I didn't do all the content. There's still plenty of things to do in that game. I was just obsessed with Victor because he was the gun guy so much that I only played him and I might have just burnt myself out of it. The last time I played the game before recently was when the Chaos Waste update came out, which is awesome. It's an awesome roguelike scenario. But then we all just kind of faded away from it and then as I booted up Dark Tide one day, I saw an advertisement because Dark Tide and Vermintide 2 are made by Bat Shark. I saw an advertisement in the launcher saying that Warhammer Vermintide 2 PvP mode is available. And I was like, wait, what? That game is still active? And turns out, yes it is. But not only is it active, it is very much alive. This game is not dead. And obviously it just got a bunch of new players because of the PvP mode, but it's averaging about before... It was averaging before the PvP mode about 4,000, 6,000 players. That's insane. And this game is not new. This game has been out since 2018 and is still going to this day. So with the PvP game mode out, I haven't checked it out yet. So if you're looking to see what that's about, unfortunately, that is, this is not the video for you. But I wanted to take a look back into Vermintide 2 and revisit what I'm basically calling the co-op horde shooter game that will not die. So before we get into this, I just want to introduce someone to you guys. He is more familiar with the Warhammer Fantasy side of it, as I'm still trying to learn the Warhammer 40k side, which is already a lot if you can't tell by some of my videos. So I wanted to bring in one of my closest friends, Rory over here. Say hi, Rory, and his Discord icon. <laughs> Hello. So thank you for coming on. I, Like I said, I'm not 100% familiar with this universe as well because I'm still working on everything else. And also we just started getting back into the game. So I wanted to bring you on. And were you aware that this game has technically not died? It's been out since 2018 and it's still getting thousands of players for average. I mean, yeah, I played this game solo a lot while, I don't know, while people were doing other things. So I nearly have this game 100%. Achievement wise. That is true. When this game kind of came out, we all got it. Did you get it when it first came out or were you waiting? No, on no, no, no. I ended up getting this game when it went on sale a couple of years back. Some point during the lockdown, I think. Gotcha. I think it was like a Christmas sale that happened. Gotcha. I think, did we all get it together? I think we did. I feel like I had it for a bit or so someone had it for a while before the rest of us. And then when we saw it go on sale, they mentioned it. I don't know. I don't remember who it was. It might have been it one of my Mason. friends. It was Mason. I remember. I think I joined his server, and that was like, Vermintide Two is only two dollars. Do we get it? Get it? So I, well, I, know you, I think you you got it after everyone else. Yeah, I was. The I don't know how long after everyone else that was though. I don't feel like it was that long. I do remember us having a team when we played this game because I always played Victor, and I believe Mason or DJ played Marcus. Uh, Mason played a lot of Marcus, but he also played a uh, dwarf. Oh, that's right. I remember his dwarf. Yes. Because <laughs> he he mainly played the outcast engineer, which is the, the DLC class. Yes. Speaking of those characters, as someone who kind of knows the factions, I actually asked you this question last time we played. Um, there's multiple factions that are being represented in this game. Yeah. So 
If uh, the quick little rundown is Marcus represents both the Empire with his earlier classes, but his DLC class, Grail Knight, is a reference to Bretonia, which is like uh, like medieval France. It's represented by a lot of uh, cavalry and like a lordship based combat, at least in in universe. You don't really get a horse as Marcus, unfortunately, but <laughs> that'd be really funny. I don't know, it's made by Fat Shark. Maybe that's been working on them for six years. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but uh, um, the Grail Knight is a reference to a I don't know if it's a direct reference to this specifically, but Bretonia is a faction in the Total War Warhammer game, and Grail Knight is a unit of mounted knights. But I also am assuming that there's probably also lore of Grail Knights. I believe you would be right. So there, another reason that I brought Rory on here is uh, the story for me for Vermintide is also very difficult to follow. And which you had said that right before we started uh, recording as well. Because you've only played the second one, right? You never played the first one. Yeah, I didn't get to meet the Ubers Reich 5 until the second game. But I know I know my brother, I think, has the first game. I don't know how much of it he's played, though. Uh, as someone who did play the first game, and this was before I got into my co-op horde shooter craze that I've been getting into lately, which I've been really enjoying... Uh, Vermintide 1 absolutely was fun, and I know we're going off topic from the characters, we'll bring that back in in a moment. But, one of the things that really dragged me in was, obviously if people know me, I like old fashioned weapons. And Vermintide 1 had a couple, there was nothing really crazy. I will say this, Victor the Witch Hunter, thank you. I liked him more in Vermintide 1, jokingly, and I'll explain that, is cause in Vermintide 2, they kind of gave him a more realistic reload for his uh, dual pistols for his range. He'll cock the hammers back and he'll reload two shots at a time. Well, back in Vermintide 1, Victor just had 40 pistols. He didn't reload any of them. And I, as someone who played the first game, and he's the reason I even bought the game because I saw the dual pistols, I always found that funny. Like, I'm just picturing Victor with just fucking strapped. And in this game, they added the, oh, no, technically he's only carrying 12, and then it does this awkward reload, which I'm not hating on at all. I just, that's like my favorite memory from Vermintide 1. Other than that, I couldn't tell you the fucking story either. <laughs> but um, going back to the characters, I just wanted to give ourselves a little bit of background on our history with these Vermintide games. Basically, some and none. <laughs> Uh, the next character that is, I believe it's the Dwarf, and I can never yeah. remember his name. <laughs> uh, Barden Gorickson. I just looked at it. Uh, <laughs> so he represents the Dwarves, which uh, is spelled with an F-Z, or an F-S, instead of, you know, a V, because for some reason, Games Workshop really likes to be different. <laughs> They gotta be so, special with their special franchise. Yeah, their special <laughs> franchise. They refuse to give out to any devs that make things in time. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the dwarves in Warhammer Fantasy are a very ancient and non-forgetting race of people. They literally have a giant book that is held by whoever's the current king of the dwarves that is full of Things that people have done to wrong the dwarves mm -hmm. is called the Book of Grudges, and the current the king of the dwarves carries it around with him at all times on his giant throne, carried by other dwarves. And every time somebody says something to wrong the dwarves, it does something against the dwarves, even other dwarves, it goes in the book. <laughs> and Barden himself uh, has a his classes represent a lot of the different cultures within the dwarves the the rangers which is his default class is uh, a an actual thing in the dwarves where most of the dwarves live underground but the rangers go out above ground and scout around the terrain of the dwarves to make sure people are not trespassing mm. well the slayer class is 
a representative of the slayer culture within dwarves. Where if a dwarf does something bad enough to warrant taking the slayer oath, they are forced to redeem themselves by dying a honorable death in combat. Which is why Barden does not wear armor for his slayer class. <clears throat> Gotcha. Because slayers are not allowed to wear armor. And then we also have the other classes as well. We have, I believe she's an elf, Killian? I forget her name. Uh, Carillion. Carillion. Wood elf. Wood See, elf. There are three different races of elves in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. There's wood elves, high elves, and dark elves. I I'm assuming the reason why they use the wood elf instead of any other race of elf is because... Firstly, Dark Elves are evil, <laughs> if it wasn't obvious. No, I picked and Sky. High elves, <laughs> high elves are nowhere near the Empire, which is where Vermintide takes place. Right, it would, wouldn't make sense for them to be here. Wood Elves actually live somewhere close to Ubersreich, which is where the game is set. Gotcha. See, this is why I brought him along. I don't even know the name of where the hell we are. <laughs> Um, then we also have uh, my favorite character, obviously, because of the pistols. We talked about him earlier. Victor, the witch doctor or hunter? Hunter. I keep getting it wrong. <laughs> so, Victor Saltspire is a witch hunter, which magic is very both coveted and feared by the Empire. To become a mage, it takes a lot of time and a lot of practice harnessing the winds of magic. And like psychers in 40k, you have to be a sanctioned magic user. So wait a minute, is Victor a mage? No, he's he is a witch hunter. Those oh, are the people okay, okay. <laughs> that are employed by the Empire to go out and hunt down all evil magics within the Empire. So Victor is part of the Empire, then. So Victor, Victor yes. and Marcus are from the same area. Or same faction. Kind of. Bretonia is its own faction. But oh, okay. With the fir a first class of Marcus, the, I believe it's called, mercenary. He is a mercenary that works for the Empire, but from what I can tell from his lore, he's originally from Bretonia. Gotcha. All right. And then we... Which, oh, go ahead. Bretonia, yes, are humans, but they are from a different faction. And also, to touch briefly on Saltspire's DLC class, Warrior Priest of Sigmar, uh, that is like one of the most esteemed positions a priest or clergyman of Sigmar, the god of the Empire, or the, basically the god of humanity. Hmm think the empire of mankind if he wasn't dead in a chair and instead <laughs> all still doing nothing but this time in wherever gods are i was gonna fantasy. say does this god choose to not do anything <laughs> and then we have i believe our last character right sienna sienna funagosis and of course i know her all too well because the biggest reason we came back to this game is the necromancer class for me personally which i've been having a blast with but Let's talk about our fire Sienna first. So what what is she? She's clearly a human. Yeah, so Sienna is, from what I can tell, at least a part of, if not from the Empire. She is a light wizard. Well, she's a fire wizard in my eyes. <laughs> so in the, the Winds of Magic, there is both light and fire magic. But I can't remember in the Empire if it is the light light wizards wield light magic or bright wizards wield light magic but either way uh she studied at a college of magic and became a and they wield the fire wind of magic so, so she so she went to school for this yes you can hear in the dialogue between characters but her talking about her old teachers is the diploma losing all your hair or it turning into fire or 
I think that's more of a side effect. <laughs> oh, my side effect when I went to college was just sleep deprivation, but I guess, you know, different degrees. Don't so we that. so we have our characters, and like I said, I, I barely know the story. You seem to know more about the universe. Can you say anything? Do you know anything about the Vermin Tide 2 story at all? Because so, when we play, I usually just do quick play. I try to follow along, but this game can get pretty hectic. So from what I can tell from the story, it takes place during the end times, which the end times in Warhammer Fantasy are, as the name suggests, the end of the era of Warhammer Fantasy. The more you know. Where chaos is invading and trying to corrupt the rest of the world. The Skaven are finally coming out of their underground tunnels and trying to conquer the world. And the Order factions, so anybody who's not evil basically, is trying to fight back against that. Seeing as Warhammer Fantasy is no longer supported, humanity didn't win. <laughs> wow. So is that what you're thinking, or just because they stopped supporting it? Like, well, did they ever write an ending before they stopped yeah, supporting it? there is an ending to Warhammer Fantasy, that being... Uh, Balthazar Gelt tries to s harness the winds of magic to save the universe and then gets stabbed up the ass by Manfred von Karstein. The, the wor He's just the worst. He's the worst. He so do does you everything to spite everyone. <laughs> so do you think Vermintide is the last that we'll see of Warhammer Fantasy? I know we have Total War Warhammer, which has been super popular, but as you said, they're kind of done with it. Are they done... Is Warhammer Fantasy done completely, or they're letting I, go of it in terms of 40k? Well, Warhammer Fantasy ended, as in the story of Warhammer Fantasy is over. That happened a long time ago, and most of the games that we play now, that being Vermintide 2 and uh, Total War Warhammer 3, which is the newest one, those all came out after the end times and the final Warhammer Fantasy book was written. Oh, okay. So the game, so the games are just showing off what has happened essentially, but no new yeah. stories are being written. Yeah, no new story. the The universe of Warhammer Fantasy ended up becoming something called Age of Sigmar, which happened, which happens with the destruction of the Warhammer Fantasy universe. Came the creation of Age of Sigmar, which was Sigmar, you know, going and making a new realm for him and everyone else and then every other powerful being that survived the destruction of the universe kind of just like slithered their way in and started doing their own thing i the end times that's currently going on is as the name suggests the vermin tide the skaven the rat people are coming up out of their holes in one last ditch attempt to, to take over and take out as much of humanity and every other order faction as they can. Okay, so for anyone else who has been confused about the story, like I have been, probably not a lot of you, I'm probably one of the few people, there you go, we have a description of basically what is happening. Now we can get into the part that I kind of do know, and we touched on it in the beginning. It's crazy to me that this game is still around, like it really is. The fact that they are still making content of all people, Fat Shark making content for this game, is also insane. November 13th, and we're recording this on the 20th, PvP was just released. And the only reason I knew about it was because I launched Dark Tide. It had an advertisement for the game being 95% off. PvP is added. Now, we haven't touched the PvP, but we've started playing the game again because we didn't have the PvP downloaded. You had to have it downloaded. And coming back to this game, I'm seeing what I loved about it, and as someone who is now going into these co-op horde shooters more frequently, this game definitely is not something you want to miss out on. It, But there is one thing that it's got unique over all the other horde shooters we play. This game is pretty freaking difficult, and Rory can attest to that. In terms of Fat Shark games, the only two I've played being... Vermintide and Darktide. I'd say Darktide is significantly easier. Yeah, because you and I can play Damnation basically when it's just you and me and we'll be fine. Oh. With Vermintide 2, you and I try to play Champion with randoms or bots and we get our asses handed to us. Well, the other side of that coin being that you're not max level. 
Okay, listen, we don't need to talk about the details, but... <laughs> My Victor's level 23, he's getting there, but yeah, you are right, like, this is not a game that, like in Space Marine 2, a lot of people are trying to max level their weapons, and then go in with a level 1 sniper character, and think they can just do lethal, and sometimes they can. With Vermintide 2, you're not taking a level 23 Victor, like I am, and trying to shove yourself into the highest level difficulty that's not DLC. You yeah. just won't be able to do it, which we do understand. So that's what we, our next project now is working on actually leveling me up and seeing the rest of this game. As I said in the intro, like I played this game, I thought I did everything. And as you can attest to, because I've been discovering it this week, no the hell I haven't. Yeah, there, there's been a lot of things you've done, but you are far from having done everything. The last time I played Chaos Waste came out and we enjoyed the hell out of that. And even though we played a crap ton of it, I still wasn't max level. When I came back and selected Victor, I thought I was. I'm not. I'm level 23. I'm not saying it's, like, Dark Souls level difficult. Oh, God, no, yeah. Because, <laughs> like, if you have, like, there are some gods out the game out there that I've gone in and been like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but this guy is just tearing it everything apart but in, unless you get somebody like that you are not gonna be able to go into max level stuff as an under leveled character and even then you're not really getting much out of it you're just gonna be like dead for half the mission i know you're not contributing to getting the making the chest better you're not carrying tones because if you are you're probably gonna die or even yeah. just fighting the chest of trials i believe they're called in chaos chest of trials those things if you're not prepared, will and Which no. we were not prepared the last two times we tried. <laughs> I think that goes into why this game is still around. There is a lot of content, and obviously this depends on when you played it. We're coming back now. Patch 6.0.3 is out, and there's a lot of stuff. I think Chaos Waste was patch 3. So we're coming in. I'm coming back three patches, three giant patches later. And there is so much stuff that's changed. But even if you've stuck with this game, like Rory kind of has... There's always been stuff to do. The progression does take a while, but I don't think that's in terms of grindy. I think it's in terms of longevity. Like you can level up each class like Victor and all Victor and all them. But then they have these subclasses like you mentioned for the dwarf with the engineer, I think it's called. Yeah, the outcast engineer. So you have even more content and the DLC in this game besides Winds of Magic. I think that's the only one I heard was bad does keep this game going really well. Chaos Waste alone kept this game going for a while because it gave a roguelike to a game that no one ever thought we were going to get like something like that. I mean, that that just breathed so much life into the game after it had been mostly dormant for at least a little bit. I won't say it was dormant for a while. We have to remember that, who that the developers are unfair. too. <laughs> yeah, Fat Shark is known for making good stuff every like 30 years <laughs> yeah look if just look at my look into dark tide video that's literally a third of the video is ranting about how sweden has amazing laws to let people actually live and fat shark actually seems to treat their employees well it's cool to me that this game is even still alive i remember i did my horde shooter tier list last year and i went in and got footage and you can see the necromancer is there for sienna and i even mentioned that. i'm like this game is still getting updated and now here I am a year later talking to you with patch 6.0 right behind me. This game is still getting updated. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 kind of crazy to think about. Like when Dark Tide first came out was probably around when I was playing this game the most. Like when it's when the Dark Tide's beta was come around the corner, I'm like, you know, Vermintide had a good run, but uh, it's probably over. I was wrong. I was so wrong. I had no idea that Fat Shark, who barely updates their games to begin with, <laughs> that's not a dig at Fat Shark. It's a it's a fact, and they even know it, so I don't think it's a dig either. But yeah. I had the same view. Like, yeah, Vermintide 2 is dead. Then I made the Horde Shooter 2. I was like, oh, I'll go get footage. Game's still active. There's a new class that just came out. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah, it it's cr honestly crazy. And the team that still works on Vermintide listens. This game is sometimes compared to Left 4 Dead 2. So oh, they added P 
PvP like Left 4 Dead 2 has. Yeah, so like I said, we didn't look at the PvP yet. We're going to go check that out eventually. But we know what it basically is. It's you get to play as the Ratlings, which I think is insane. Not only that, you can purchase cosmetics for these Ratlings. So this isn't like Space Marine 2's Eternal War. They seem to actually put a lot of love and care in this. So props well, to them, that, and I can't wait to check it out insane. later. That's not to say that the Eternal War has no love and care given to it. It had love and care when it was created, and ever since then, it's been like, yeah, it's there. And that's coming from someone who loves Eternal War, by the way. Please don't think I don't. Like, it is fun. <laughs> but with that being said, like you said, the gameplay, actually. That's a perfect uh, segment. The gameplay, you said, is a lot like Left 4 Dead 2. Not only that, the gameplay for Vermintide 2, if you played both, the gameplay is extremely similar, if not... A copy of Dark Tide, but obviously in the 40k setting. Dark Tide focuses more on range. It's still melee focused because it's a fat shark game, but you can definitely go through a whole game with just your range. Whereas in Vermintide 2, for me personally, it doesn't feel like you can. It feels like they want you to hack and slash these ratlings, which I am okay with. Yeah, there, there are. I feel like for most of it, there's a very good balance of melee and range. Because you play a class like Marcus Kruber, who is your your generic knightly guy with big weapons and rallying his allies, but then he has his like what's it his huntsman class that focuses on stealth and ranged combat. Yeah, and I love that about these subclasses, how they all can be pretty uniquely different. We were just talking about. I was ranting to Rory yesterday. Victor has two subclasses where he doesn't use range. And as someone who's always played the Huntsman and the Witch witch Hunter, I'm like, wait, what? Why would I not want to be ranged with Victor? And But then you go to, I don't have the DLC one, Rory does, but I have the one with the Medieval Flail, his third one. And honestly, the Medieval Flail is really fun to use. <laughs> yeah, So you got, it's cool how different they are. You got Bounty Hunter... Which Witch Hunter Captain, his his first class is yes, good, but his bounty hunter class mm -hmm. completely focuses on just guns. Yes, and that's why his I made perks it. <laughs> give him more ammo, his his uni like uh, his career special. ability, I think is what it's called. He just pulls out a giant gun. <laughs> he that, pulls like, out a gun his armor and enemies. <laughs> I love the subclasses in this game, and just like how I was fangirling earlier. I will say that Sienna is my least favorite class. I don't like the burning mechanic and all that stuff. But now I finally got Necromancer because it's all on sale. <laughs> Not sponsored. Wish I was. And I no, love... Maybe, wait, somebody, somebody tweet it, Fat Shark. <laughs> yeah, right. Like I said, I never touched Sienna. I didn't like that mechanic. Necromancer came out. I saw the skeletons. I'm like, oh, I need to buy that. That's going to be so cool. And yeah, I still don't like her burn mechanic. But that's a that's a me personal thing. That's not a bad mechanic. It makes sense. But with the Necromancer class, I will deal with it because I love it. The sight she gets for her new melee weapon, her new staff, and obviously the skeletons are so fucking awesome. Yeah, Necromancer came out, funny enough, around, I'd say a couple months after Diablo 4, which at the time, Necromancer was my favorite class in Diablo 4. It's the class that I mained throughout like the entire story. And like seeing that come out and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm buying that. <laughs> that, that is, this is so cool. And the cosmetic upgrade you can get for all the DLC classes, which yeah, I do think it's a little silly that you gotta pay for the skins. You also have to do that for every other class. Dark like, Tides the like that too. The cosmetics are good. I feel like the cosmetics are worth it. Especially because unlike Dark Tide, you're not playing your own individual character. You're playing as an established character in lore. Right. And I do find that crazy how these games are made by the same developer, but they're obviously being developed differently. Vermintide 2 has a lot more cosmetics than Darktide. Vermintide 2 will have you pay for missions and stuff like that, like the um, a win uh... Wings of Magic. Yeah. Um, they'll, hell, they'll even make you pay for a new difficulty, whereas Darktide... It's strictly only cosmetics, new operations come out. And the reason I say this is because it's all made by the same developer. It's crazy how different. Obviously, Vermintide 2 came out. Maybe it's because they had a different practice. It was during the time where map packs, season passes were still more 
common, not in this like battle pass era where everything's free, but you gotta pay. Like this cosmetic paying era, which I hate as someone who loves cosmetics. So it's cool how it's cool to see how games were in 2018 versus games like Dark Tide Now, which I believe came out in 2021. That uh, sounds right. Yeah, Dark Tide. 2022. Yeah, 2022. And I'd say that Dark Tide is a live service game. And so is Vermintide, but Vermintide is live service in the same way that like Black Ops 2 was live service. Right, yeah, exactly. I know. You exactly weren't getting what you mean. like season passes and shit. You got map packs and announcer packs. <laughs> like that that kind of stuff. Because who didn't want to have Snoop Dogg as their announcer in Call of Duty Ghosts? <laughs> Obviously everyone. Best selling best DLC. It should have won the game of the year. <laughs> um when it came when it, so we talked about the longevity, the story, these, the gameplay, obviously. If you like the Dark Tide gameplay, you're going to love the Vermintide 2 gameplay because it's essentially the same hack and slash, use your weapons, use your specials, etc. The craziest thing that I want to mention personally here, just because me and Rory love it so much, the Chaos Waste mode, which we talked about a little bit, it's basically a roguelike. Um, and Rory, you might be better at explaining how this essentially works. The Chaos Wastes, you you start the Chaos Wastes at exactly 300 gear score, because you don't get tal talismans to boost your score, and your weapons go down to gray quality, but they start at 300, which is the max for regular. And you start with the weapons you picked in the menu. Regardless of what perks they have, they go back down to, like, common quality. And on top of that, going through the Chaos Waste, you can find boons to buy with coins you can pick up. Which are just, like, mini perks. And you can upgrade your weapons with little shrines. Yeah, you're basically leveling up as you go, but you don't keep anything until you get to the end. Yeah, the only thing you keep through it is you keep a portion of the Pilgrim's Coins, which is the little currency within Chaos Wastes, at the end of each run. But you have to start over from no, no boons, no upgraded weapons. And each, you can also, like, instead of going to a new level, you can go to a, like, a little merchant station where you can buy boons and even blessings for your whole team with the, your coins. Right. And it's a lot of fun. It really is. The fact that you're able to, like he said, you start at any gear score, so you can select whatever weapon you want, like your starting weapon. For example, I really like Victor's Rapier because you have the special attack where he just pulls out another gun. And I really like that for its diversity, like being able to do melee and range still at the same time. But as you go through, obviously you're going to want a better gear score weapon, so you'll get a random weapon through, a, through one of the areas. There's chest of trials, like to really test your skill. And like we said earlier, this game can be difficult. And I like that about it. it. To me, it makes it unique. And I know I'm not a max level, like Rory mentioned, but it's cool to me because I can run through Aliens Fireteam Elite. I can run through Dark Tide half the time with randoms. I can absolutely run through Space Marine 2 pretty easily. Vermintide 2 really makes you, I'd say it really tests what you're trying to do. Like, you're trying to see, like, hey, can I run through this? And if you're not good, you're not going to. <laughs> yeah, Dark Tide has a lot of mechanics to, like, help you catch up and to, like, keep you alive. But there's no toughness in Vermintide. If you get hit, that damage is permanent until you exactly. can find it. And on higher difficulties, healing items are basically non-existent. And sometimes you have to search for them. Like, they're not just in a very obvious open area. So you can yeah, walk past a bunch of healing items and not even know it. There is there is no resupply room before the boss fight. That too, If you yeah. aren't prepared, if you didn't save up enough gear, if you're low on ammo, you, you might just lose and end your run there. So, Rory, you followed me on my... You followed me on my journey with Horde Shooters. Not all of them, obviously. But you played Deep Rock, you played Helldivers 2, you played Dark Tide, Space Marine 2. And like we said, this game is still around. With all the stuff we mentioned, obviously people enjoy this game. Would you say Vermintide 2 kind of makes itself unique with what it does? 
compared I to all the others. Compared to Dark... I feel like if there was ever a game to try and compare this to, it would be Dark Tide, but that's just because it's by the same <laughs> Bat Shark versus studio. Bat Shark. <laughs> like, there is... N I've not played a single Horde shooter that reminds me of this other than Dark Tide, but that's just because they run on the same engine. The same engine, so they have the same mechanics, stuff like that. Yeah, but like, the, other than its, you know, sister game that comes from the same studio... The only thing I could imagine it being similar to is Left 4 Dead 2, which right. for such a long time was the only game like it. Yeah. And with like it Hell, also... Helldivers 2 doesn't have an enemy that grabs you and restrains you. No, thank goodness. <laughs> well, here's hoping. Here's hoping <laughs> it stays that way. <laughs> but Space it's Marine cool. 2 has something similar with, like, the Ravener. Yeah. But that's it. With all the stuff that we essentially said, like, you know, like, it reminds you of Left 4 Dead 2, so if people checked out this game and they were a huge fan of Valve's Left 4 Dead 2, they're obviously going to feel a connection with it. And with all the unique stuff it does, the chaos, the... Well, it's not unique, it's pretty unique in this day and age, the PvP. The only game I can think of that did something like that as well is Back for Blood, but it wasn't good at all. <laughs> It's cool to see that this game is still... Like, we all make fun of Fat Shark. We do. They take forever on everything. Dark Tide alone. But when Dark Tide came out, like we said in the beginning, we thought Vermintide 2 was... That was it. They're gone. They're moving on to another project. They can't handle both. They've shown us they can. And we don't know exactly how the developer studio is working. If it's split in half. If it's a small team on Vermintide. Majority on Dark Tide. But it's cool to see that they can do both of these games. And it's even better if you're a huge Warhammer Fantasy fan like Rory is. It's cool to see that Warhammer Fantasy, even though it's done, hasn't been forgotten. And it's still being kept up with this game. The only other game that I've played that has Warhammer Fantasy in it is Total War. Do you think we will see more Warhammer Fantasy in the future, on your personal opinion? In my personal opinion, I really hope we do. But I have my doubts because Games Workshop is really stingy about who they give their IP out to. As much as I would love like a Battlefront or a Battlefield type game that's Ooh. like, even if it's just something simple as like, you play as Skaven versus the Empire. Just like seeing that setting in, in different types of games would bring me so much joy it's cool to see that this uh fantasy themed setting trying to figure out the right word for it is still alive in people's hearts it's a fantasy that a lot of people still cherish it's a great it's got great combat great gameplay the story if you can follow it is good it seems like it's during the end times like you said and thanks for spoiling for it for me it sounds like we lost <laughs> Well, considering that fantasy is not around anymore, yeah. <laughs> well, well I, I guess it's less that we lost and more that whoever was trying to, uh, the bad guys succeeded, but considering that Sigmar is still around, they failed at the same time. Right. It's I weird think. and complicated and convoluted. Oh, just like Warhammer in general. <laughs> yep, that's Games Workshop. But it's uh, it's awesome to see Dark Tide didn't kill this game. Space Marine 2 didn't kill this game. This game is still going strong. And that's why I want to talk about it. It's a horde shooter that will not die. And I think that's very impressive knowing the development team. I just wanted to say thank you for coming in. Like I said, I didn't know yeah, no as much about this area. So I definitely wanted to get someone else in that could help shed light before I said a bunch of wrong stuff. And knowing my luck, get canceled before I can even get famous. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching this video. This, But if you enjoyed this one, why don't you go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. See ya.